All right, so let me just start off the this organization video with a little bit of a walk around the garage now that I've actually made some progress. So I've had a little bit of extra time over the last few days. I've gotten my ass out here and I've applied myself. And while I know it's still not beautiful by any stretch of the imagination, things are definitely going in the right direction. I still have a lot more stuff to do, but I'm getting there. So one of the things that was on my uh, agenda was tool organization for the Hindi lathe. So there's the big ugly beast. And that is mostly metal that came from the fuel oil tank that I just demoed from one of the rental properties. So <laughs> I'm kind of happy that I stumbled onto that. <clears throat> so it's not anything real extraordinary. But I think I like the direction this thing has gone. A um, couple of mistakes was over here on this side where I've got the magnetic strip. I didn't recognize when I first put this thing up that I was going to have it on an angle or have the actual back of this thing on an angle so having the magnetic strip mounted to the side is a little inconvenient I might need to flip it 90 degrees or 45 degrees or something and uh, give it another try but otherwise I'm pretty happy with it and I'd forgotten I wanted to weld on oh some small bolts or some pieces of um, arc welding rod for uh, hooks for some wrenches and I'd forgotten to do that as well but we will uh, probably be you know revisiting this and making some modifications at some point in the future but for now I think it's a really good start for that particular machine let's see what else so one of the other things I'm wanting to put up a light that can serve both of the mills. So basically, I guess I, guess I can't really, <laughs> uh, let's see, how am I gonna do this? So there's a small void where the two machines come together. So I wanna, I wanna try and mount one of those lights to the ceiling off of a uh, short drop down piece of lumber or something so that hopefully I can use one light to service both machines. I just have to decide which light I'm going to use here. So this black light came with the Hindi. This was out at the rental properties and that one was out at the rental properties. I'm leaning towards this one here, but I'm not sure yet. It's just going to be a matter of whatever will articulate the best. But the nice thing about, well, the nice thing about those two lights is they're old enough to be um, age appropriate for the machinery that's out here, I guess you could say. So, anyways, let me put the uh, the phone here on the stand, and I'll kind of go through the list of odds and ends. <clears throat> oh, actually, one other thing. So one of the one of the things I recognized is I needed to make a place in the garage to put unfinished projects. And so far, that spot right there 
is where unfinished projects is going to start accumulating. So eventually I hope to clear out more of the stuff that's accumulated on that set of shelves and pretty much dedicate a portion of those shelves to unfinished projects. Um, one of the one of the rules that I'd like to be able to do, which I know I am never going to be able to, would be something along the lines of finish a project before you start a new one, but I know I can't function that way, at least not at this point in time. So at least one of the uh, one of the positive things was in the process of cleaning off the workbench, I stumbled onto a couple of well, three unfinished tap wrenches. So this one's got quite a ways to go yet, but this this guy here, I had accidentally assembled it backwards somehow, and I had my um, notches shifted from one another. So basically, I had to cut it back apart and you know, re re well, flip one side 180 degrees so that I could get the uh, notches situated the way I wanted to. So, ah. <clears throat> and then here's another unfinished one that I started tinkering with a little bit. Let me put these ones down. So this is going to be one of my dedicated tap wrenches. Um, obviously, I got to finish, you know, out cleaning up all that, but um, what I've done is, let's see if I can show it here, I've got a set screw coming through right through there, and I'm going to use a Allen set screw to secure the tap in. So this is specifically set up for my nice OSG 3 8 inch spiral tip tap. So that is what this particular tap wrench is going to be dedicated to eventually. So in the future, these particular tap wrenches are going to have this uh, rotated 90 degrees so that I can have the set screw come in straight. When I first started building and designing this one, I didn't quite figure out, I wasn't totally sure what exactly I was going to do with it. Now I've got a little better idea of the direction I'm going with the tap wrenches. So I think I've got that particular thing sorted out. Let me go through my little list of uh, things here. So I'm trying to move myself into a system of thinking kind of like modern factories with on-demand. Uh, try not to order materials until a few days before I know I'm going to put them to use or most likely going to put them to use. Try not to bring in additional tools, power tools, until a day or so before I'm likely to put it to use, etc., etc. Now, obviously, and projects. Keep the projects out of the garage until I'm confident that that's the project I want to work on for a particular series of days. <clears throat> um, so we'll see exactly how that works out in the future, but that's one of the things that I'm trying to change my thinking towards. Um, so another thing I guess I really didn't show when I first walked in is I'm getting a lot of the excess steel out of the garage that I haven't put to use. So when I initially bring steel home from the scrapyard, I take most of it out back, um, but then I go out back, you know, weeks later, grab a piece or a few pieces that I think will be useful for a particular project. And then what I do is I pile it up in the corner of the garage over there. 
and it just becomes a, a train wreck. So I've started to get some of that metal out and I'm starting to reclaim that unused space. And therein lies a good learning experience for me to some extent. If I were, if I was one of those individuals that was buying material, um, you know, buying pr nice materials from McMaster car or this, that, or the other, it would be prudent to not buy the material again unless it's on demand until a few days before I see a project coming up. But seeing as I'm a cheap ass and I'm getting my materials secondhand like that, I kind of have to bring them home when they're available or they'll either get scrapped or purchased by someone else. So that's kind of my own fault, but it is what it is. I just have to learn how to manage it properly. And just every so often, it's another one of those things I need to spend the time removing excess material from the garage. Um, oh, so another thing that's been brought up a number of times is the roll around cabinets. And once upon a time, my biggest thing was uh, mechanic type work in the garage, uh, working on cars, working on trucks, motorcycles, airplane, you name it, whatever. If it had an engine, I worked on it in the garage at one point or another. The one thing that never really stuck for me was a roll around cabinet. I can't tell you why. I can't quantify it. I can't put it into words. It just doesn't work for me. And I don't think it will work with regards to the machinist hobby either. Um, but I have thought about it. Don't get me wrong. It's... I've considered it several times. I've considered a number of things several times. But I think static storage solutions is predominantly going to be the ideal solution for my particular set of needs. But um, like I said, I could change my mind completely uh, a week from now, a month from now, a year from now. God only knows. But... Uh, while it's a fabulous idea, especially for larger, for a shop with, you know, greater space and whatnot, it's just, it's, I don't think that's going to be the solution for me. Um, so the, the, the metal in the corner thing, that's one of the, one of the things I'm trying to drill into my head is a no pack ratting clause. And... I still haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to word it yet, but the ultimate one of the one of the two big goals out of this whole ordeal is trying to come up with a small series of targeted rules that I can write up on a placard and put somewhere in the garage in big letters so that I can keep reminding myself, keep pushing myself towards these rules, which will hopefully help me keep the garage in decent order. Now, obviously, these, these rules are going to be geared specifically for me and my particular mentality is going to be geared towards my limitations, the garage limitations. But uh, the other thing is, I would definitely love to hear any rules that any of you guys happen to have that you guys live by that helps you keep your stuff organized um, or rules that you'd like to um, strive towards living by. Uh, you just never know when someone else's idea is going to resonate something for yourself, or in this case, for my, for me, for my particular uses. Um, one of the last things that I was going to go into detail on on this video is 
trying to organize, uh, starting to come up with ideas how to organize my welding cart. So that is probably the only cart that I'm likely to have uh, is for welding specifically. And one of the issues that I currently have is I always wind up with the welding blankets are just in the way. The welding blankets are in the way. The uh, My leather welding jacket is always just flopped over top of the welder, which the jacket's probably fine thrown on the welder. But I don't know. I think you can kind of see the white with the red paint on it right there. That's one of my uh, welding blankets. And then this is my other welding blanket. There again, on just thrown over a convenient flat surface, which another one of the rules I'm trying to uh, get myself to comply to. But what I'm thinking with the, with specifically with the welding blankets is maybe getting myself a, um, oh, like a towel holder or making something along the lines of a towel holder that you would have, you know, your shower towels draped over and applying that to the side of the welding card. I think, uh, I think that would be a good solution for them because I can usually fold them up into a small enough package that I think I can easily flop them over that and they'll be out of my way until the situations come up to what, that I actually need them. So anyways, um, I think that's the end of what I wanted to touch base on this week. Uh, the only other thing is I've, I've relocated the drill press there again. I don't know that it'll stay there for terribly long, but for now, I'm happy with that location for the drill press. Uh, part of the reason why I've got it on wheels in the first place is because I just don't really have a spot nailed down for the drill press yet. But maybe in the months or years to come, when I ever do actually get the Atlas finished up and sold, maybe the drill press will go back in that cubby hole, which is where it was. Uh, about a couple years ago, a year and a half ago, but basically that cubby hole has kind of been dedicated to shapers since I started getting uh, shaper machines. So, anyways, again, I know it's it's not a lot of progress, but it is progress nevertheless. And I'm going to put in the description of this video. I think it's seven rules that I've come up with roughly so far. I'm going to put them in the description um, and I will probably kind of modify them, adjust them a little bit in the future for whatever placard I come up with for my long-term uh, rules to employ. So anyways, that is probably enough yapping about this subject. I'm kind of beating a dead horse, I guess you could say at this point, but every week, every nine days, I'm making a little more progress and a little more progress. And this past week has been the most progress by far. So I'm pretty happy with myself. So anyways, until nine days from now with another boring update of the shop organization, I will catch you guys later.